Hey everybody, Dr. Osgood here with Grassroots Functional Medicine. So it's the beginning of March, there's still snow on the ground, and we're already seeing problems with ticks. We're having ticks come in on our pets, we're seeing ticks on our children, so we're already uh, ramping up our tick defense and trying to figure out more ways uh, to reduce the population at our home. And we've experimented with this a lot throughout the years. Many of the things we've done have been helpful, but they just haven't got us to where we need to be. So we're gonna take a little bit of a different approach this year. So um, what's happened in the past, we have used uh, essential oil tick sprays. We've had people come out and spray. We have uh, actually bought guineas and we have laying hens that roam around our house. We've treated our pets. We use essential oil repellents on our children when they go out to play, but we're still having problems with this. So this year we're gonna be a little bit more aggressive and we're gonna use tick tubes. So tick tubes uh, are have actually been shown to decrease the tick population by approximately 90%. So it can be pretty significant if it's done right. And I wanted to walk you through how to make these tick tubes, uh, but also you can just know you can buy them online. So long story short on the tick tubes, essentially what they are is it's a uh, toilet paper roll with a uh, cotton inside of them and the cotton has been soaked in permethrin. So permethrin is a chemical so whenever you're messing with it you want to uh, number one educate your children to stay away from these because that's important uh, but also if you're going to be making these six tubes you want to make sure you have a good set of gloves and even some eyewear is not a bad idea. So I'm not a huge fan of chemicals by any means but at the same time uh, you know, I've had to weigh the risks and the benefits of my children getting tick-borne illness versus, you know, having the these isolated um, chemicals throughout the yard. This year, because we've almost tried almost everything else and haven't had the luck that I'm looking to see, uh, we're going to go with it and see how things go. I've heard a lot of good things about these tick tubes, so uh, hopefully we see a, an, a, a significant improvement by the end of this year. So this is something you want to do typically twice a year uh, based on the tick's life cycle. You want to do them in the beginning of the spring and then in the fall to get the best results. But anyway, a lot of people don't know that uh, ticks are actually not born with Lyme disease. They have to pick it up from a different host. Typically where they get Lyme is from rodents like uh, mice or rats or chipmunks or squirrels. So how these tick tubes work, again, I'm gonna show you how to make them, but the cotton here is soaked in permethrin. You put it into the tube, and then uh, you, you scatter them around the perimeter of, of your yard uh, in the woods just a little ways, typically every 10 to 15 feet. The mice will pick up the cotton that is soaked in permethrin. They will bring it back to their den and then utilize it as bedding. So the permethrin on the cotton gets onto the mice's fur, and then when the ticks bite the mice, remember that the, the mice are the vectors, when the ticks bite the mice, they will die because of the permethrin, but the permethrin is not gonna kill the mice or the rodents. So it's pretty neat how it works, uh, and it you know, has a lot of pen potential to be really effective. So if you're struggling like we've been, this might not be a bad thing to implement. So let's jump into how to make them. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to save your toilet paper rolls and your paper towel rolls uh, over the year, and we've been doing this um, all year long. We've got a huge box full of them. Uh, with, the, with the toilet paper rolls, we just utilize them whole with the paper towel rolls. We cut them up into three sections. You're gonna need to purchase some cotton. You're gonna need to utilize some water. I got this bucket from Home Depot, and what's nice about it is it has um, a dilution instructions on there because we're also gonna be utilizing permethrin, and this is a concentrated uh, version of permethrin. It's more inexpensive, uh, and uh, it works really well. You don't need much, but typically what we're trying to create is a four to one dilution when you're using a 37% permethrin, which is what we're gonna be using today. So what it's gonna be is one part um, permethrin, four parts water. That's what we're gonna be looking at. What we're gonna do here is we also wanna utilize a container because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the, the, the permethrin solution, we're gonna soak the cotton into the solution, we're gonna transfer it to the container, and then uh, that's where it's gonna dry. When the cotton balls are dry, then we're going to put them into the tubes and then uh, scatter them throughout the yards every 10 to 15 feet. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some uh, water. And again, what's cool about this container is that it tells you uh, with your ratios where you need to be. So we're gonna do a four to one uh, solution here. So I'm gonna pour this up where it needs to be. Four parts water. 
and then we're going to use this permethrin solution and we're going to do one part permethrin. And there's also instructions on the back of this to show you how to dilute it. So we've got that four to one mixture mix right there. And then um, I bought some tongs specifically for this that we will discard at the end. We're going to uh, take the cotton and then we are going to uh, put the cotton into the solution here. We're just gonna pat it down in, stir it around a little bit. And then we're gonna take this, the cotton with the tongs and we're gonna transfer it to this container. So the permethrin does have a slight odor to it, but it's not, it's not too bad. And I'm gonna do that with uh, essentially the, a large portion of this bag because we're gonna be making a lot of tubes. We have about um, you know a one acre parcel here where we're gonna scatter the tubes. So we're gonna need quite a few of them. We're probably gonna have to make several batches here. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that dry over the next couple of hours. And once those cotton balls are dry, then we're gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be adding it to the uh, paper towel rolls. All right guys, so we're back and uh, the cotton has been sitting for several hours now. It's pretty much dry. So we're on to our next step or our, you know, one of our last steps, which is simply just to take the cotton pieces and to stick them into the toilet paper tube. So let's go about doing that. So, you know, honestly, you just want to stick it enough in there so it, so it all uh, stays there. Typically about three to five pieces is a good place to start. You can push it in from both ends just to create a little bit of tension so the cotton stays in there. So once the cotton is in the tube, like you're seeing here, it's ready to go. And then you're just going to simply take the tube and again, put it around the perimeter of your yard in the woods, uh, approximately every 10 to 15 feet, depending on the size of your house, that's gonna determine how many tubes you actually need. So really it's pretty easy, uh, you know, you just wanna carve out a piece of your day to do this because it does take some time for the uh, for, for the cotton to dry. A couple of things just to remember when you're going to be putting these out, uh, educate your family, educate your kids to stay away from them. I would still highly encourage you to implement all of the natural methods that I discussed before to help reduce your tick population because it really did make a difference at our house. We just needed to take it to the next level. Uh, a couple of things just to recap when you're mixing your mixture, make sure you're wearing gloves and uh, even some um, eye protection is not a bad idea. What you want is about a seven to 10% concentration when you're doing your mixture. If you're using this 37% permethrin, you wanna do a four to uh, one ratio. And, uh, and then you just gotta get the supplies and it's as simple as that. So in regards to Lyme disease, you know, just be aware that it is a big problem, especially here in New England. And it's a, it's really a nationwide issue, uh, picking up cases even in Texas, and it can really be debilitated. So your best defense is good prevention. Beyond the tick tubes, beyond the chickens, beyond the essential oils, and all of those preventative measures that you're gonna take, your best line of defense is actually your nightly tick checks. So make sure you're take, checking yourself and your children every single night, because that can make a huge difference. Uh, you know, one of the things that we started doing too is not letting our pets sleep with our children. They love to have the dog sleeping with them, but again, and that can be a, a big form of transmission, just jumping from the pet to the child. So uh, make sure you're being diligent about that. And if you do get bit, take the right precautions for that as well. If you get bit by a tick, you want to uh, send the tick in to one of the many companies that are out there that will test the tick for tick-borne disease. It's usually an overnight deal. You can get your results within three to four days. And then, you know, if you're suspecting that you have symptoms or having problems with Lyme disease, find a Lyme literate practitioner who can, uh, you know, really help you out and figure out a treatment plan that is going to work best for you. Remember, in the acute stages, that's where um, antibiotics really are important as you are more progressive rest in dealing with chronic or persistent Lyme, you know, you have to look at all of the various options that are out there and supporting the immune system from a holistic perspective is extremely important. So again, I hope you found this video valuable. My name is Dr. Seth Osgood with Grassroots Functional Medicine. We have practice locations in Burlington,
in Vermont, in West Lebanon, New Hampshire, and we even see people in Texas. So if you're struggling with chronic disease and you want to take a root cause approach to figuring out why your symptoms are happening and really address the problem uh, from a holistic standpoint, that's what myself and my team really uh, do well. So come check out our website, grassrootsfunctionalmedicine.com. I hope you stay safe and healthy. Have a blessed day.